Hi, I'm Jamie, and today I want to show you how you can create a pivot table from multiple sheets in Microsoft Excel. No formulas needed. Here's the goal today. I have this workbook here that you can download down below in the description so you can follow with me step by step. If you take a look at the different sheets at the bottom, you can see that there's different areas. I want to combine all these sheets into one pivot table so I can quickly analyze all the data together. Now, the other thing I want to point out that I have on the end, I have this product descriptor. Notice when I look at the different sheets here, I don't have the product coming up. But what I want to show you is how to build a relationship quickly with these so it adds another field to the pivot table that you can just drag across and it will actually show the name of the product with this. And this again is done with no formulas at all. Let's get started. The first thing that I want to do with this data, and this is just generally good practice to do this, is to turn this data into a table. And to do this, if you're unfamiliar, you can do this up top under insert, go to table, and you can use the shortcut as well. Just click control T. I'll just click this for now. And you notice right away, does my table has headers? Yes, and it knows the range because I was clicked inside of it. So if I hit okay, this is a table. I'm gonna rename this table up top here where it says table one. I'm just gonna call this one north. And now I'm gonna to go to south. I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna use the shortcut this time, control T, and I'm gonna hit okay. And again, I'm gonna name each of those the same way. Now, if I click on each of the tabs, you can see I have each of them named. The other thing I wanna point out with the headers, they need to be named the same. So notice if I look at north, south, west, and east, they're all identical. Now, you could have them in different order, but you need to make sure that they're named the same for this method to work. The next step is to bring this data into the Power Query Editor. And this is where we can combine data very quickly. So if we look across the top, we wanna to go to our data tab here, and then we're gonna to go to get data, and we're gonna go and launch the Power Query Editor. When it opens up, you're gonna notice that there's nothing in it. We have to add our source to it. And if we go across, if you follow my mouse, look at new source. If I click on new source, I could go to file and it will give you an idea of all the different sources that you can add here. If I go to data, we're going to be using our Excel workbook where we're going to be picking those specific sheets to combine. So I'm going to click on it. I need to go find it. It's this one for me. So I'm going to import. When it brings this up, the navigator, this is where I select what, uh, what sheets I want to add. So I can go select multiple items. We want the east, the north, I don't want product. I'm going to be bringing this in later though, south and west. When I have those all selected, I'm going to hit OK. Now at this step, when it brings it in, it hasn't combined it yet. I have to do one more thing to this. But right now we have four different queries of each of those that I brought in. It's only a couple of clicks to combine them. If I go back up top here and take a look at append queries, so now I want to create a new query, append queries as new, and I'm going to combine. So you can see from two tables or three or more. In my case, I'm going to go three or more. I need to select the ones and put them over here. Right now, West is already over there, so it's just three more to add. I could select one at a time and click Add. I could also just select and hold Shift down, and then multiple ones will be selected, and then I can add them like that. We can also change the order of any of these. For these, it doesn't really matter to me what order they are, but you can change them here. So at this point, I'm gonna hit OK. And then I have a new query. It's called append one. I don't really want it named that because that doesn't mean anything to me. I can quickly change the name of it if I double click over into it. Let's say I call this one total. And now if I take a look at this, I have all the data in this one query here. And the other thing that you can do in the Power Query Editor, you can clean up your data. I'm gonna put a link to the different video I have all about Power Query, about learning it if you're a beginner to it, up top in the top right-hand corner, you can click on that and check it out. But now this is pretty simple here. I don't have anything to clean or change in this one. I'm gonna go over to close and load and I'm gonna choose close and load too because this will give me some options to do here. 
And this is all about creating our pivot table. So what I want to do is this pivot table report. So I'm going to choose this option right here. And I want it on a new worksheet. I don't want it on the same worksheet that I'm on right now. So I'm going to have new worksheet. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So now to notice at the bottom, this is called East 2. I don't really want this one called East 2. So I'm going to just quickly call this total again, uh, just to keep the naming easier. And I'm just going to click in here. And now we can go ahead and start to build out our pivot table. So I'm going to just stretch this over here so you can see it a little bit better. And if we go down here, what am I looking for? Well, I'm going to go to all and then take a look at uh, we want to have our total. So here's total right here. If I open that up, so expand it, I get these all the different things that are under that total one that I created. So the first thing I am going to be looking at sales amount. So I'm going to put this just drag this into values. So by itself, it just told, it tells me that total sales amount. But this is where I can quickly analyze the data with the pivot tables. If I click region, notice it goes right to row. I could drag it down there as well. But now I can see east, north, south, west. It gives me a little bit more. I could go and look at the products sold. So now it's broken down by east, then the products sold, and the amount of each. With any of these, if I change the order, so if I drag product sold up, notice now it has the product first and then the east, north, south, west. So I could keep adding more if you wanted to know what the customers were. So now the information goes through. So I'm going to uncheck the customer name here and take a look at this. So I have the product ID as P001, P002. I want that to have the actual name of the product. And if I take a look at this tab or this worksheet at the bottom, I have P001 and all the different ones. And this is the product. I want those names to show up here. And this is going to be the next step that we're going to do is build a relationship. Before I go and build the relationship, I need to make sure I create another table here on this product sheet. So I'm going to click on product sheet. I need to turn this into a table. So I'm just going to click in here and go control T. My table does have headers. Hit OK. I'm going to give it a name quickly. I'll just call this product. So that I'm going to be looking for this table name. So that's why it's important to be able to quickly find what you're looking for. And I just want to point out if we take a look at any of these where they pull the data from, notice I have where the uh, product number is right here. It's under product sold. So remember product sold and this over here is product co code. So we're building a relationship between the two of these. Sometimes you might have them named the same, sometimes different. It's up to you on how you do this. Now at this point, I'm going to go to data up top and we're going to look in data tools. This is where I'm going to click to start my relationship. So if I click this right here, we're going to create a new one. So after that's clicked, I have to connect the two different tables. So the first table is going to be that total table that we created to begin with when, when he took all the four different sheets and put it into one. And that one's right here, total. Now the related table was called product here. So I'm going to go ahead and find product. Here it is. That's what I just named that table. But we also got to make sure we connect the correct columns. So in the first one, what did I tell you it was called showed when I showed you it was called product sold. And in this one, you can see it's open here is product code. So I need to connect it to product code. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And this is going to build the relationship. At this point, hit close. Now I'm going to go back to our total sheet here where we have everything combined together. So at this point, I want instead of this P001, I want to know what the actual product's called. So I'm going to take a look and look now I have this product here. So I'm going to just expand it and that's going to be the item type. So if I take item type and drag it down and depending on where maybe I want it up top, and notice I have the ergonomic foot hammock here, but I still have that P004. 
I might not want that. So what I can do at that point, here's the product sold, is just drag it out. But there's a relationship built between the different tables that I have here. So we have all of them listed here. And just like before, I can change the order depending what I want. So it's a great way you build that relationship. There has been no formulas added to this, just using the Power Query Editor. So what do you think? Do you think this is something that you could see yourself using? Now, in this case, I did combine the different sheets for using it as a pivot table, but you can go ahead and not combine it for a pivot table. Maybe you just want to combine it to create a new table. But do take a look at those other tutorials that I mentioned about using the Power Query Editor or learn more about pivot tables with my other tutorial as well. Thanks for watching this time on Teacher's Tech. I'll see you next week with more tech tips and tutorials.